of the Lord comes in and begins to fall down on us like rain. Brother Bays, we need to feel his presence. We need to feel his power. How do we expect God to do anything for us if we can't come into his presence and begin to worship him and begin to praise him? The pastor's right. The pastor's right in what he said a while ago. We need to feel his presence more than anything in our life. I don't know about you, but I've desired all week long, brother. I'm trying to take your place, but I've desired all week long to feel His presence, and I couldn't wait to come into the house of the Lord this morning to feel His presence. I can feel His presence at home, but we see God in our everyday life, our everyday life that we live, but yet we fail. I'm sorry, I got to obey God. We fail to acknowledge Him. All the simple things we fail to acknowledge Him. Sister Bates, we need to praise Him more now than we ever did in our life. What are we going to do, church, when we make it to heaven? What are we going to do? We're going to worship Him and we're going to praise Him. But our thing is, if we can't do it down here, and I've said it before, how are we going to do it up there, Sister Wanda? How are we going to bow down before Him up there if we can't do it here? You know, my Bible tells me the greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. But sometimes we live such a defeated life. Sister Wanda wasn't feeling very well when she came in this morning. She had sickness in her body. But you know what? I serve a God that I know that can still move for her and her body. I know a God that can change situations. Me and my wife, all have been, we've been going through some things, but I've relied on God. I haven't relied on nobody else but God because I know that He's the only one that has the answer. He's the answer to everything we have this morning, church. There's not many of us here, and I know that He's probably itching to teach. But I've got to go obey what God has on my heart. No matter what, God is here. And I want you to entertain for a minute the presence of the Lord. I want you to stand to your feet if you don't care. Sister Chelsea, I want you to lead that one more time. Because we're here to worship. We're here to praise. We're here to thank Him, Sister Martha. Because one day, we're going to leave this world. And when we leave this world, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Are we going to be ready to meet Him when He calls us, brother? Can we say that we have our salvation secured in Jesus this morning? If you can't say that you don't have your salvation in Jesus, if you've got to put it somewhere else, you're mistaken. Rob said, well, no, this altar is always open. We don't use the altar enough. We don't pray enough. We don't seek His presence, brother, enough. We don't lift Him up enough. But I don't know about you, but I came to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords this morning. Go ahead, Sister Jesus.
still feeling <laughs> what everybody else I think has. Amen. It's a pain, isn't it? It's a pain. It's what it is. I won't mention where it's a pain from, but it's a pain. <laughs> Old devil likes to give us sickness. Amen. Amen. And uh, how much I owe the Lord. How much I owe him, Brother Bailey. Amen. How much I owe him. For a fact, this morning we won't uh, we won't be going over to Joseph or going to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I don't know how long we'll speak this morning. Um, <coughs> this may be a couple, <coughs> uh, three weeks lesson, but that's all right. I'll be given starting a home Bible study this week. And if anybody, I want to say this: if anybody ever wants a home Bible study, you've got particular subjects or something that you want to know more about, just let me know, and I'll be glad to put the material together and have a home Bible study with you and your family or you and your spouse or whatever, you know. I don't have anything else to do with pastor. <laughs> somebody said, somebody said, boy, you, you pastor full time, wouldn't you? I said, you better believe it. I'd love it. I'd love it. Amen. The church has begun to pay us a little salary at the month, and I can't live off that. Sister Alvy's got expensive tape. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but for fact, churches here in the United States have been. We're going to First Corinthians twelve, First Corinthians, I Corinthians twelve. Uh, for fact, pastors here in the United States they last about thirty months in a church and they move on. Thirty months, like two and a half years, and they move on. Been a great flip flop pastor. Some churches can't even get pastors, and they share with other churches. A lot of church boards have the authority, and the pastor has no authority. Very few churches last long, and many churches in the United States are closing their doors. A lot of them are. Amen. Thousands of churches every year in the United States close their doors. But no one in this church can tell the pastor what to preach. Amen. I dare him to try. I don't qualify any of the ministers, Brother Bays. I don't qualify their messages before they preach them here. If God gives it to them and they think that's what God has given them, amen, then they preach it. Amen. I've never really had to set anybody down. <clears throat> there was one crazy tried to get up here and I, I let her know, but anyway. I don't, there's too many crazies in the church. There, there really are. Yeah, come on. Some, somebody said, well, you don't allow a lot of these preachers around the area to come. No, because I know them too well. Amen. I don't like crazies. I like somebody who's got sound doctrine. I like somebody that studies. Doesn't just get up here and give you a little valley of dry bones and you say amen a few times we go home. I think you need some substance to eat on. Amen. A little milk in the cereal every once in a while is good. But boy, dinner time rolls around. I, I like that meat and potatoes. I'm a meat and potatoes kind of guy. Amen. But no one in the this church can tell this pastor what to preach. As a matter of fact, uh, this church is set up, I know because I set it up, that nobody can even drive the pastor out without great cause to do so. Amen. You try. You try. Matter of fact, if you get a petition with 51% of the membership roll and ask me to leave and you lay it up here, I'll go. But the curse of God will be on your life, I promise you. Amen. <laughs> Brother Corn will say that. I'm still with this <laughs> But what, what will make a church grow is obedience to God. Amen. It really is. Your obedience, not, not me obeying God. I died with me obeying God. I know how to do that. Right. Amen. But what about you as individuals? Do what, what I see lacking, and I'm going to pick on you for a minute. What I see lacking is your prayer. Oh, boy. I'm right, because nobody amen. Amen. It is your prayer. And seeking the gifts that God has for you in your life. Yes. Now, a few weeks ago, we, we preached, taught, or whatever you want to call it, on the book of Titus. And the fact that there 
are specific roles in the church for individuals. There are specific qualifications, Brother Tim, for leadership in the church. There are also the roles of the home laid out in the book of Titus. The Bible teaches us that. The Bible tells us that in the book of Titus. Then last weekend, I believe we preached and taught two services, Sunday morning, Sunday night. If you weren't here, shame on you. But go back and read or listen to the, uh, the live services. That's what they're there for. But we taught, preached, whatever, on the gift of the Holy Ghost. Right. Being baptized with the yeah. gift of the Holy Ghost. Man, what power that it is, Sister Wanda. I love the Holy Ghost. It is the fullness of God within me. I am baptized into Christ Jesus, but I am baptized with the Holy Ghost. So 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I want to now move so we, we know the roles. We know what it takes to be qualified to be leaders in the church. We know what God's expectations are. We know about the, the, the gift of the Holy Ghost. God will channel all of your spiritual gifts that he has for you through the gift of the Holy Ghost. As a matter of fact, I view the Holy Ghost as the channel that God moves all the gifts through. It's how he pushes his gifts from heaven down through you is through the power of the Holy Ghost. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I'm going <coughs> to take my time because there are several things I want to hit on. And I'm running out of time fast today, which is good. You obey the Lord. Don't you worry about me, Brother Steve. Now concerning spiritual gifts. As a matter of fact, Sister Alvy, I bought her a new car this week. And I told you she's got expensive tape. <laughs> but, uh, I didn't get the luxury one. <laughs> we, uh, we, did, we, wanted, we wanted to take more people to church and bring more kids to church and things. And so I said, we're going to do this. And so, uh, now I know what somebody's going to say. Man, I hear it already. You gossip about me. Oh, no. <laughs> but somebody's going to say, well, the church just started paying him and he bought he gets new, new car. <laughs> Let me tell you something. <laughs> Amen. Don't you come at me, baby. <laughs> Amen. But uh, for a fact, the boy that sold us the van, he was, uh, his family's all apostolic. They're all Pentecostal. And he's as far from God as he could be. Yeah. And he's been on my heart. Ever since we bought that van, I was praying for him this morning. I said, Lord, that young man has to get saved. So we don't know what God has in the mix. But he asked me for one of my favorite sermons. So I printed off the gift of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and I gave it to him yesterday. And 16, 17 pages of notes. I don't normally do that, give anybody my notes. But I thought I'm going to give it to him because he was... He was taught wrong in the first place, and maybe this will help him a little bit. But, church, we have gifts of the Spirit, and there are gifts available to us that we do not utilize, and we don't pray and ask God for those gifts. Do you understand that this morning? The gift of the Holy Ghost is just the beginning of what God can do through you. He said, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not that you would, I would not have you ignorant. It is important that you know what you are missing out on when you do not pray and seek for the gifts of God to be used in your life. Amen. Okay? Now I'm not talking about the fruit of the Spirit, love, peace, joy. That's all great. Don't get me wrong, that is all fabulous. But we're talking about the spiritual gifts of God. That is different, Sister Juan, am I correct? That is different than the fruits of the Spirit. Matter of fact, the boy asked me, he said, what are you going to be speaking on tomorrow at your church? And I said, I'm going to speak on the spiritual gifts. Oh, yeah, the uh, isn't that like, and I'm like, you know, it's not uh, uh, peace, joy, love, harmony. I said, we're talking about the gifts that God has. Not the fruit. Not the fruit, the gifts. Here's what he says. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Now here's, here's what I see, Sister Haley, in the church and in, in so many lives, is that we truly get a, 
we, we truly get blocked by all the stuff in our life. And that takes precedence over seeking the will of God in our life. Oh, I wish I could get more of one amen. 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 I'm talking, where's that little devil I, I carry around with me all the time? I know you all don't do this, but it's called the phone. Amen. And, and uh, some will say, well, my Bible's on my phone. Well, you're holier than everybody else. Amen. That's great. But this little thing right here consumes so many people's times, they don't have anything in mind. For, for, for fact, listen to me. You will go to read your Bible, and this little thing will go off, and that Bible will close, and you instantly get that out because somebody said, what are you doing for dinner? Amen. Am I wrong? Amen. We, we are more concerned about what our, bet, our BFF or what our, our spouse or our mom or dad or cousin has to say than we are more concerned about that than we are concerned with the Word of God. Amen. We are more concerned about what, what the wife or the husband is cooking for dinner than we are about what God has in store for us. Amen. Amen. We are more concerned and consumed with what's going on in the next five minutes than where we're going to spend eternity forever. Amen. Amen. Hey, that's good. I don't know where that came from. That good. I don't think I'll get paid enough after that. Amen. He says, wherefore? Let's go back to that. Let's go back and read that. Ye are carried away with these dumb idols. <laughs> it's stuck that consumes us. It gets in the way, Brother Bates, between us seeking God, our time with God, our, it's not just our prayer life, it's doing other things around the church. Well, Brother Alvin says we're having another something going on this Saturday. Or this is going on. I ain't got time for that. What else are you doing? What, what is so important in your life that you miss out opportunities to fellowship with your brothers and sisters in Christ. There's so many good things on TV these days. So much that edifies your spirit, isn't it? I wish somebody helped me this morning. Amen. The, what's going on in the television, what's going on in the world is more important to you than it is serving God. Okay. All right. Let's move on because Amen. I, if somebody asks for their offering money back, Sister Christy, just hurry up and put it up. <laughs> Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. You, let me read from my notes. You do not know the fullness of God until you are filled with the Holy Ghost. Man, I know what I'm talking about. God can reveal more of himself to you and through you when you have the gift of the Holy Ghost. Isn't that right, Sister Wanda? Amen. It is the fullness of God. Too many church pastors are led by the demon, I mean the, 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 the deacon council or the deacon board. <laughs> and not by the Spirit of God. I was listening to Brother Cornwell this week and he said, he said there was one man, he had just taken the pastorship of this church, you'll appreciate this. And uh, he said he was, the pastor was in there unboxing some stuff, and putting out pictures of his family. And I guess he hung a picture of his family on the wall. And one of the deacon members came in his office and said, uh, said what, are you, what are you doing? And he said, well, I'm just, you know, getting my stuff out, decorating my office. He said, you, the, the deacon said, Pastor, you can't hang anything on the wall without asking the deacon board if it's okay. I can tell that board where to stick that picture. I guarantee you. You tell me where to hang out. I show you where to hang out. Amen. The silliness of people needing to feel, now you say, well, that, that's silly. That sounds, amen, but how much stuff in your life do you try to, Come on now, hang quickly. How much stuff do we try to control in our life because we just won't let it go and when we look back on it, we know how crazy it looked. Yep. Amen. Okay. Amen. Yes, y'all are so perfect. 
A true experience with the Holy Ghost will show you how to run a church, how to fulfill your gift in God, and how to conduct yourself. Amen. Verse number four says, and there was diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. The Holy Ghost will move differently on people to bring about the gift that God has for them. For, for a fact, you saw today uh, Brother Stephen moving around and praying for people. That's a gift of the Spirit. Amen. Spiritual gift. Words of knowledge. Words of wisdom. Different yet the same. It's a gift of God. A brother or sister comes to you. And they begin to relay something to you. It's a fruit of the Spirit. It's a gift of the Spirit. Not fruit. It's a gift of the Spirit. Do you understand that? Amen. That is a gift, but there are many, many, many other gifts that God has for each of us. Amen. All because we have the Holy Ghost doesn't mean we have all the gifts. No. Right. Amen. You agree with that? That's right. Amen. God, the Bible, I'll show you later where Paul even says that, but sometimes we have the gift of, of, uh, 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 of tongues. Somebody else may have the gift of interpretation, but I've seen people with the gift of tongue and interpretation. God does that. The one gift that I see that really, two gifts really, that I see lacking so much in every single church is faith and healing. Amen. Okay, let's go on because we've got a lot to cover. We've got 10 minutes. Amen. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Whatever your gift is in Christ, the Holy Ghost, he knows that. The Holy Ghost is the power of God, therefore the Holy Ghost knows and will try to pull you and push you in the direction that God wants you to go to fulfill your walk in Christ. But here's the thing. The stuff gets in the way. Amen. Our stubbornness. I know none of you are stubborn. But stubbornness gets in the way. Sister Christy. Amen. Woo. Amen. Man, come on. Help me preach for the day. Amen. <laughs> stubbornness will keep us from... From walking and fulfilling, I just pick on her because she's like an elder sister. Amen. <laughs> but but it, there is stuff in our life that church, you've got to remove it because just like a drunk driver is <clears throat> intoxicated and they, they can't control what they're doing, without God in your life and allowing him to control you, Amen. you're just like a driver out here that's intoxicated that should not be behind the wheel. Amen. Amen. A man. Calls himself a man and won't lead his family through the will of God. Well, come on. What's Amen. the will of God? Well, first of all, the will of God is to not lay in bed every Sunday. It's to bring your kids to the house of God. Amen. Amen. Well, let's move on. And there was, amen. Let me let me say this. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit will try to try to move you in the channel that God wants you in. Sure. While the Holy Ghost is you, the Lord is using the Holy Ghost to do that, Brother Eric. Satan's going to be on the other side fighting. Yeah, no, come on. Right. Amen. Yeah. Come on. Amen. Things right now, mm -hmm. amen, might be going good. Amen. Yeah. Hey, this is the good life. I guarantee you tomorrow Satan's going to be trying to knock at your door yeah. uh -huh. to divert what you're doing right for God. Amen. 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 I wish somebody else say amen. amen. And there are differences of administrations but the same Lord. There are different offices in God, amen, but it is still the same Lord that gives to all. Amen. amen. The, the Holy Ghost is, a, is the fullness of God in us, amen. It's the power of God, but it's the power of God. Amen. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation, I've seen it. Demonic spirits manifest themselves, amen, in people. I've seen it before even in homes. And God, and the, what, the, what the devil does is he tries to mock and mimic everything God can do. Amen. Right. You believe that this morning? Right. Amen. amen. But the, 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 the Lord has, the, he has the, 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 the corner on this, so to speak. He, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Amen. The Spirit will manifest itself differently in you and in me than it does in others. Right. Brother, brother uh, Stephen, amen, has 
has the gift of wisdom and knowledge, words of wisdom and knowledge. He'll give to people. You, 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 some of you have ex in this room have experienced Brother Stephen coming to you. I just pick on him because he uses it. That's not to say that others in this room don't have that gift, but one chooses to use it and receive the blessings of God. Okay? When, uh, but Brother Stephen can't pastor this church. Sister Wanda has the gift of, of tongues and interpretation, but Sister Wanda can't always give words of knowledge and wisdom. Amen. I wish somebody would understand what I'm saying here. The Holy Ghost has a gift for you, and how you allow the Holy Ghost to work through you will express that gift that God has. Amen. Are there any questions about this? Go ahead, ask your question. Uh, <laughs> I ain't going to ask a question. It's just, I want to stay back. Uh, I have been used in every gift listed. Mm -hmm. I used to be number one in prophecy. I was number one in uh, pro prophetic speech. <coughs> uh, it was like God speaking through me. I can discern spirits. Mm -hmm. That's good. I can discern illnesses in people. Mm -hmm. I know what they've got. I told my brother one time when he was here uh, that a certain person had a certain illness and he is an expert in the diagnosis of this field and he spent time with that person and said you're right so i said i wasn't right god was spirit right. yeah amen I, I have the gift of tongues and interpretation thereof i have like i said i i, I see visions prophetic visions that's what the prophets of old did Every one of these I, I, words of knowledge, some people told me I was doing that when I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I was telling people things. Uh, some people said I have the gift of wisdom. Sister your base with this <laughs> <laughs> I can understand that. I have faith. I have faith where most people are just full of doubt, and I don't even understand them. I'm looking at them like, are is, is that the way other Christians are, you know? And I have no doubt. I have absolute faith. And it, when I pray for somebody up here, I hate doubt. That's right. Uh, I have not one doubt in my mind, not one doubt in my heart. I've been used in the gift of miracles. People with cancer have been cured when I laid my hands on them. I've cast demons out of people and out of houses. I've cast ghosts out of them, I, whatever they, they were supposed to be. I've done these things because I asked God to God manifest in me all of your gifts. Amen. But, here's the problem. I've been under pastors who didn't want me doing anything. Yeah. If they didn't do it, it couldn't be done. Yeah. I couldn't keep him tied in the chair long enough, so I'm sorry, guys. And so that put me in submission. That made me quiet. And, but it made me learn to be humble. And I, you'll see that a lot of times I don't speak. Unless I, I don't come up to pray unless Brother Robbie points at me and says, come up. Or Brother Steve gets me to come up. I submit willingly. But that's because of the oppression of some of these pastors that I have worked yep. with. Yep. But I've worked with pastors who were also very free and open. Go for it, brother. Go Amen. for it. You know? Amen. And I have used in this church, I haven't used prophecy. Prophecy seems to get you in trouble <laughs> more than any of the others. If you stand and say, thus saith the Lord God, uh-oh, uh -oh, people get all kinds of worried about you, you know. And, and doubt that. But then I'll speak with a voice that doesn't sound like my voice. And I'll be speaking words. I ain't thinking. They're just coming out. Interpretation. I've done it here in this church. One time when tongues were being spoken, I interpreted. How do I know what to interpret? I don't. God knows. Sometimes, though, I have heard tongues and I understood what was being said. It was different. It was. It was different. Everybody else was hearing tongues. I was hearing English. I, I can I elaborate on something you said there because I was praying. It must have been yesterday or the day before. 
I was praying, and Sister Wanda, I'll look at her too, because she understands this as well. I was I was praying, and I was asking the Lord for three specific things. I don't I don't remember now exactly what they were. And I began to speak in tongues. See that the Spirit will do that in you when you're praying. And uh, I began to speak in tongues. And in in my spirit, I I said those three things, but it wasn't in English. Yeah. You ever done that before? Yeah. And even there there have been times where I've been in uh, in the Spirit by myself. This is absolutely beautiful. You you think I'm crazy, but it's because you never you never done it yet. Uh, but I've been singing. And all of a sudden, the words start coming out in an unknown tongue in the right. Holy Ghost. Absolutely beautiful. Amen. It's beautiful, yeah. Sister Juan, isn't it? When that happens. All now, look at these two. The spirit. Amen. Sister Juan, go ahead. I was getting ready to bring up some sweaty products. Uh, like you said, everybody don't have all the gifts that they have. And it's I'm sorry that you two were in that situation because I firmly believe that that's quenching the spirit. Yeah, it is. I, I know it is. I, I also say, I don't believe you would ever put us in that. I would not. And I, I, you might disagree, but I I believe that's a sin, quenching the spirit of God. I believe he that knows to do right doesn't to him it's a sin. I believe quenching the spirit is a sin. You're stopping the moving of God. First of all, my question is, why in the world would you ever want to stop the moving of God? I mean, I beg for it every service, every day. I beg God to move in my life and move in this church. Why would you stop that? Well, you got, you got to understand. But there's people that feel like they got power and they got authority. Go ahead. That's, that's the first, the bondage has, has been put on you. No, I get that part. I it's get that. hard to come back out of it. I can see that. My question is, as a pastor... And you want to lead people to greener pastures to understand more about God, you definitely wouldn't keep your I, I wouldn't keep my thumb on something. Yeah. Now, again, let me emphasize the fact that, as Brother Bay said, there are there is discernment, right? And there have been times, one in particular, a crazy gets up here and starts going on. I discern that that's not God. Things start coming out that I know are not biblical, that are not scriptural, and taken out of context of the Bible to fit um, a, a narrative that they want to bring about. To me, it says, well, wait a minute. That's not the Spirit of God. Right. Amen. Amen. I'll share, I'll share with you uh, an experience of, uh, of the gift of discernment. I was praying through a home one time, and... Uh, and I've probably told you this before, but I was praying through a home, and the Lord told me to go to the bathroom of that home, and under the cabinet was a pornographic uh, materials. And so as I prayed, uh, I was praying in the name of Jesus through that house, and uh, I start to go down the hallway, and the Lord tells me, he said, you, you go in the bathroom, and I go in the bathroom, and all of a sudden the Lord tells me something is in this cabinet. And I opened up, sure enough, there it was, and Sister Alvy was with me, and we got rid of it. That is a good, that is a good example of discernment. Yeah. But let me tell you this. A person that has the gift of discernment will never use it to embarrass somebody in the church. Right. Yeah. The Holy Spirit should not allow you to do that unless you get in cell. I can discern when Sister Bates is hiding God real well. In fact, she was getting on to me. I think on the other day, I had discern where she had her chocolate in, and I got into it. Let me, let me say something. You know, no, you go ahead. I'll do this. When I, when I first started to talk, uh, or <coughs> hanging with Rob, and it wasn't here, it was a long time ago, right? I don't know how many years ago. God, God called me to work with him, and I told him that. Yeah. And I told him when he became pastor of the church, I said, I submit myself unto you. Right. Because I knew what kind of pastor that he was going to be. Right. Now sometimes, and I'll just say it, a lot of people in the church, Sister Wanda, thinks he's rough. 
or tough. But he gives up here and gives the word of God that God gives him that we need. It may cut to the heart sometimes. It may not sound good to your flesh, but it's what your soul needs. Amen. Just like this morning, I'm not going to say me. It wasn't me. It was the Lord. Yes. But the God is calling, and he's faking Rob, I think, and you can correct me if I'm wrong because I've told you that before, and trust me, he has. But God is calling this church to learn to not only what he preaches take to heart and carry to other people, but when we come in, we can't just sit here like a bump on a pickle, never raise our hand, and never do anything. Because when we enter his gates with thanksgiving yeah. and enter his courts with praise, yeah. God will come down and he will begin to move. Amen. But God is not going to be where he is Amen. not wanted. Amen. If you don't allow God in, he's not going to move. He'll move himself to somewhere else or some other church that's willing. That's so true. The same can be said about someone's home. Amen. We, we, we want and we expect God to move here, right? But how come there's chaos at home and things aren't right? Well, do you pray at home and seek the face of God as you should? Amen. God can move in your home, in your car, Amen. in everything if you just Amen. allow him to, Sister Juan. Amen. If you've noticed, the best times of this church, as far as the name of this church now that's changed, when we've seen people change or lives change or new people come in, it's when we've done two things. And Sister Juana can tell you, it's when we fast and we pray. So Brock just not up here doing his math and saying, go home and, and fast a meal this week. And you go home and you say, well, I'm going to fast this week. I'm going to fast something. You yeah. fast something and you never put prayer with it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Or you pray and then you don't fast. The two go hand in hand. Am I right, Brother Bates? Right. The two go hand in hand. So I challenge you this week, when you go home, to fast and to pray. Amen. And I guarantee you, we will see more of a change in this church. Amen. I'm not going to say I'm sorry. And, uh, no, uh, that's like, you know, let me say this too. Uh, I got to go, you know, I'm just, uh, I don't know what, I'm being a little sarcastic here, but that's like, I got to go to the doctor Tuesday morning and I got to fast before I go to the doctor. So I'm just going to, that's a good time to fast for the church. No, 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 come on, come on, that ain't the way God is. You got to, you got to, oh, I'll just kill two birds with one stone. Well, maybe God will do that for you when you get sick next time. Yeah. Uh, Old Testament law says when you fast, <coughs> give your meal to some poor person. Yeah, that's okay. So that's when you're fasting, you're giving your blood to the doctor. And that's yeah. <laughs> In that case, if it was a really good meal, I don't want bowls of cereal on the front door. But if it's a really good meal and you're fasting, just bring food to me. I'll take care of it for you. Oh Amen. God. Let's all bow our heads this morning. I know we have a good time, but this is a serious, serious matter. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for your word. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of the Holy Ghost. God, that all of these, these gifts channel through. And Lord, I thank you for that this morning. And I pray, God, as we are endeavoring, Lord, to do more for you, to seek your face more, to grow as individuals, Lord, spiritual growth. I pray this morning, God, bless each one that's here. Let us take this lesson to heart, and God, the next few weeks, as, and Lord, as we teach on it. And God, I pray this morning that you help us to seek for the gift that you have for us. God, in this room sets the gift of healing. In this room sets the gift of faith, sets the gift of prophecy, sets the tongues of interpretation of words and wisdom. But God, those aren't the only gifts. Lord, your word gives us an extensive amount of gifts. And I pray this morning, help us, Lord, to pray and fulfill them in our life. In the name of Jesus. Sister Christy, would you come to the piano this morning? I know that we've had prayer, but I want to open it up for anybody that needs uh, prayer for anything. I don't care if it's body, health, uh, whatever. Would you come this morning, please, and let us anoint you with oil. The Bible says to call on the elders of the church. Anoint them with oil. Amen. And they shall be healed. 
Amen. This morning as they get a song, amen, whatever you want it to be, Sister Christy, just turn the mic on. Uh, hit that little button at the bottom. There you go. Amen. And uh, come up and we'll pray for you today. Amen. Pastor. <coughs> little Jeremiah that has been here, little baby, he's, oh, yeah. creamy. he's been having reflux really bad. Creamies do that. And Joni asked for prayer for him. Amen. Are you going to see them? I can call her later. Okay. Let's anoint a prayer call this morning. Amen. And let's believe. Brother Bates, would you come? Amen. We're going to put your gift of faith into action today. Amen. And let's pray for this baby, Jeremiah, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, we ask for God that you would hear this baby. God, I believe in the story. Yeah, he's the best one. Yeah, I'll 
Well, you're you're a sweet one. Okay, good. Well, you got to live another hundred years. Amen. Sister Martha, we prayed because God, they wanted her to have a surgery here while back, a hernia surgery. We were praying that God would heal and she wouldn't have to have it. And God healed and she didn't have it. And then they were giving her some bad news here a while back. And now it sounds like it's all good. Amen. That's the way God is. But little Martha has a lot of faith. She has faith because she knows the only thing that's going to heal her is God. She knows that. Open that door up to him. Come on. Amen. Jesus. goes to school, I pray for favor for him in school. God, I pray that his learning and his uh, everything about him, Lord, will be open. And God, that he will know exactly how to read, how to learn, how to interpret, and how to focus. God, you can give him these abilities. I pray for hypersensitive sensitivity to reading and to learning. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Bless him, Lord. Let's give God a big hand this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brother Bates. Amen. But let me say this before we dismiss. Brother Matt will be speaking tonight. Elijah will be speaking next Sunday night. Amen. So come and support him. Brother Bates, dismiss. Father, in our holy name, Jesus, we thank you for thy word, for thy spirit, for thy presence, for thy people. We thank you for all these things that we have been doing in worship of thee and praise of thee. Oh, Lord, in thy glorious holy name we pray. Bring each and every person in the next supported hour with peace and safety and rejoicing. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Thank you.